views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. The show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. Well, hello, everyone. Another episode of Into the Pit here. I am your host, Coyote Knight, and I have a very special guest. And I hope you're watching on YouTube because she's gorgeous. Oh. And <laughs> she's an awesome person, and her name is Susan Slaughter. Welcome, Susan. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, oh, I appreciate you taking time out of your day because I know things can get hectic, especially as many hats as you wear. Yeah, I know. I just uh, speaking of hectic, just before a uh, little, a little bit of a mishap, we could blame it on Mercury retrograde. But my car is in the shop, and I'm dropping a good eighteen hundred dollars to get it fixed. So yay for me! Oh my gosh! <laughs> you give me eighteen hundred, I'll be your Uber driver. <laughs> Dude, I had no car for one month and Uber and Lyft drive, like uh, rides that I took in one month just to go to and from a venue that I work at part time cost me $400. I was like, for $400, I can have like a Mercedes Benz leased out to me. Like, why? Yeah, no <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to think about that right now, especially right. tax season. You know, when you work for yourself, the, all the many hats that I wear. I'm paying Uncle Sam a lot of money in taxes because those don't get taken out in my paychecks. It's a rough February, but uh, I'm getting back on the wagon. It's fine. No, oh, you'll get there. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about paranormal. Yes. But let's get to know Susan Slaughter, the person. All right. So where'd you oh, grow up? You and, yeah, tell me so, about you. I currently live in Los Angeles. I've been here for 10 years. And before living here, I grew up in Miami, Florida. So I was living in Miami. Mm. Um, I started investigating with a team in Miami called the League of Paranormal Investigators. Um, they've disbanded, um, you know, it's hard to keep a team together. A lot of people like moved out of Florida, like even the team leads now live somewhere in the Carolinas. And um, so they disbanded. And um, before that happened, I ended up, I was doing investigations with them and uh, doing a lot of things like around the Native American um, burial grounds in Florida. We had like in South Florida where I grew up, we had um, a lot of reservations out there, uh, Miccosukee tribe reservations. We also had like um, even things that predate those tribes like the Tequesta Indians, which um, were unfortunately no longer a tribe by the time that we were colonized um, because they were killed off by the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of their burial grounds still exist to this day. And we did a lot of investigations in these sacred sites. Um, Also a lot of the newer things that were uh, built in the 1800s built on top of ancient Tequesta Indian burial grounds. So that was kind of the start of my investigations in Florida. Um, were mostly burial grounds and local resident haunts. And um, after that, I ended up joining, um, I guess, the television sphere. I started off on Ghost Hunters Academy with Mm -hmm. Stephen Tango on the very first season. And uh, I was with a great, great crew and cast of nov. We were called novice investigators, but everybody that they picked were incredibly smart. Mm-hmm. So I definitely had a run for my money. And I made a lot of lifelong friends through that show too. There are people I still work with today, like Carl Pfeiffer. And him and I both won the first season and we went to Ghost Hunters International. Um, eventually I guess I stuck on Ghost Hunters International and Carl continued to do more of his endeavors because he's an author um, and he also started like he had other endeavors he was working on outside of Ghost Hunters International so I think he went in and focused in on that where I stuck around and investigated for two seasons over three years with GHI um, and then after that I you know started I mean, GHI got canceled, you know, funding was getting harder and harder for legitimate investigations um, because ever since the rise of other shows that came on that I shall not name, um, people are (laughs) expecting, you know, 
to see ghosts every episode, but in real life as a paranormal investigator, as you're a paranormal investigator, a lot of the time you go into a location and not, it's mostly sitting in the dark talking to yourself, you know? So um, exactly. <laughs> things like that don't like, uh, you can't trigger, we're learning how to, um, I guess, stimulate activity now like people are bringing in things like electromagnetic pumps to raise the environments electromagnetic energy because the idea behind that is to stimulate like i guess activity like phantasmic activity but even then it's just it's really hard you can't get things to happen on cue so a lot of the times and even with ghost hunters like the home you know teams they would go and we're, it's mostly a debunking case and it's mostly a history show, you know, that yeah. if we're lucky, we get some form of phenomena, but we're not going to fake it, you know, whereas a lot of uh, other shows out there misinterpret the things that they capture and then feed it to their audience as something paranormal or supernatural when in reality, um, they're just misinforming their audience, unfortunately. So a lot of the times I get in the battle of like, especially with people, viewers, things like that. I try to educate them that paranormal phenomena is not this like crazy, like, you know, like you see now on YouTube, all like kitchens with poltergeist activity, like opening and slamming doors and things like that. I'm like, honestly, that never happens unless an earthquake is going on, you know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right. Like, like that to me, it's just bizarre to see the misinformation that people have on the paranormal. So, but you know, people want to be entertained. And I think now that what we have on television is more of like entertainment in the storyline of paranormal ph phenomena. Um, although I am very happy to see that ghost hunters did come back. Yes. Um, yes. And they have Grant now leading the team, which um, he's, great and two friends of mine dear friends of mine that are colleagues that I've investigated with that I stand behind and back a hundred percent and tell you with a hundred percent confidence that they are not fakers that they are professionals and they would never be involved with a show that would do so, something like that so that's, that's Brandon Alvis you know um, he I've investigated with him a bunch and he's a great investigator so I'm like super stoked that they brought back a science-based um show again you know i'm just waiting for them to bring ghi back <laughs> so we could go right. abroad and do the same thing you know but right now i'm doing paranormal caught on camera and um I, and it's kind of a very easy gig for me because you know i just have to talk about uh types of phenomena and theory and religion and tactics and things like that which i find really interesting and it, it's broadened my range because if you've ever watched Paranormal Caught on Camera, it's yes. also cryptids and aliens and UFOs. So now I have to educate myself on those subjects too. So it, it's broadened my horizon from just being a ghost and like a ghost person, a paranormal investigator to somebody that now has knowledge and opinions on things like, um, you know, ghosts and or I, I mean i already said ghosts but you know like aliens and ufos and government disclosure and cryptids like um it's it's given me the opportunity to educate myself more in other realms which uh be, it makes you <laughs> question everything on this planet <laughs> well, it, re it really does and you know um are you familiar with uh, steve shippy I can't say I am. He was, he had a program on Amazon called the uh, Haunted Saginaw. And now oh. Tra Travel Channel has just started a show with him on it called the uh, Hauntings in the Heartland. Love and, it. And it comes on Friday nights. I actually got to talk to him earlier. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, we talked about how things have kind of gotten away from taboo, especially because of shows like Ghost Hunters that are bringing it out and people get to not only say, Hey, did you catch that on the show last night? This is what happened to me. It's making it easier for people to get out there and talk. And, you know, I, me and him agree on one thing, the, the activity has always been there. Mm -hmm. It's just people haven't always been comfortable about talking about it. Um, yeah. you know, I'm going to put my life out here real quick, but there was a point in my life where, 
the I thought I had gone crazy and I was hearing voices and I ended up going into a hospital to get treatment and you know they want to pump you full of every drug in the world and then as I got more deep into doing the paranormal and getting actually on a team for the first time and and experiencing it I, I got to meet some mediums which I honestly didn't believe in before but I could tell you some stories that I won't get into now but they were saying you have a portal in your house and things are coming through so nothing's staying but they're passing through mm -hmm. um, we lived literally walking distance to the cemetery not even a block away and I would get up in the morning and my uh, lazy boy would be turned upside down. Uh, I inherited a grandfather clock from my grandfather. And when I'd wake up in the morning, it would be laying over on its side. Now, you know how Whoa, big. Oh, that's a huge piece of. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, you would hear it if it crashed. Yeah, that would make all sorts of noise. <laughs> Especially when it's like five feet from my, my bedroom door. And uh, I don't sleep that soundly. So, you know, um, and the medium came in and said, yes, you, you have a portal here and things are passing through. And she says, these things that you're hearing, it's, it's not a, a mental problem. You're actually hearing these things. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. might be clear audience. You have like a psychic ability that you have to like train yourself to utilize appropriately. Um, clear audience is like a external hearing of voices or sometimes you'll get thing like a whisper right in your ear like it mm -hmm. won't be like you're hearing something down the hall but it'd be like so close to you and that's an ability and i believe that so many people have these abilities i believe every person has the ability to be a psychic um and there are so many different types of abilities that it's like it's very colorful you know just like there are so many different types of dog breeds, you know, like right, there are different right. types of abilities uh, psychically. And what it sounds like is you have the ability of clear audience, like you can hear things. And if you already have that ability and like, let's say you start to train yourself on like how to listen even deeper, maybe um, just like that psychic who told you you had portals in your home, like she, that's not something that she just woke up with and said, Hey, I can really, feel people out you know like that was something she had to train herself to focus her energy on to start seeing I, I mean her type of ability too like she might have a different type of ability where she um you know is a medium can speak to people that have passed or she can see into the future um or maybe she has things that come into her dreams but everybody has if, if you have one ability, it's totally possible that you can actually train yourself to have multiple other types of abilities. Um, so I think very, I think, yeah, I think when you, the first thing you said when I was hearing stuff was like, oh, you like you have an ability or clear, like a clear audience, you know? Well, when, I, when I was growing up a, as a child, it would sound like somebody was calling my name or you know, some, there, I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. And even at my young age, I kept thinking I was, I was just hearing, my brain was pull, uh, playing tricks on me, let's put it that right. way. And so I, I thought, wow, this is cool. I wish it happened again. And then later on, I'd hear, you know, hey, Kyle, or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I never attributed to it because we it, it did not grow up talking about having these abilities and you know you see a psychic medium they're all you know smoke and mirrors and there's tricks to everything and then when I finally got to meet this particular lady she made me a believer she told me things that there's absolutely positively no way she could have known and yeah. Um, she she did you join our Google team. Google search that info. <laughs> yeah, the the stuff that we, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, we went in to to go do a reading. I wasn't really supposed to be getting the reading. It was supposed to be my wife and one of my daughters. And all of a sudden, she just looks up and she says, uh, "Did you have someone just pass away?" And the only letter I'm getting is a B. And 
it blew my mind because just that morning, my grandfather had passed away and his name was Byron. Oh, wow. And so, uh, you know, okay, that's not a coincidence. Nobody in that house knew that it happened. Only my wife and my daughter. And yeah. we all came in together. And, and they didn't say anything about Byron no, passing. No, did they? Nobody had mentioned it. I didn't even wanted to ask because I was like, you know, I want my, gr my grandfather to, to pass on. So, you know, I'm not going to ask about him. Yeah. And, um, and then she started going, how come I keep hearing the water boy? And we all busted out laughing because the running joke between us is we start quoting stuff from the water boy, you know, H2O. Yeah, Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, water sucks. It really, really sucks. I mean, we're doing that all the time. And she, she pulled that out of the air. But how the hell did she do that? She just met us. Yeah. No, even the lady that was hosting the thing didn't even know that. So um, I'm going to ramble on about this, but you know, I, I, I've, I've learned to appreciate that. And she said, I do have abilities and that I need to, to work on it. My problem yeah. was, is where, how do I do this? How do I get started? So I don't know. Meditation practices help a lot. I, yeah. I've heard that too. I've heard that um, too. I think you should definitely look into to that. And, um, meditations like saved and changed my life completely. Um, it also is very beneficial for health ailments and stuff. So once I started, um, I could be better, I'll be honest, but I started uh, doing transcendental meditation techniques and I actually took courses on that. I went and I, I, I learned about it with a group of people. I went and it was a class situation that you take four courses and every six months, um, you go in for what's called a checking with the mm -hmm. person that taught you. And, um, it has nothing to do with religious beliefs. It has, it's all about mind controlling. It's being in control of your own mind and body. And it teaches you how to inwardly concentrate. And then you start getting, um, thoughts and messages through, um, I call them colors and vibrations that is very, very biological and terrestrial. People are like, oh, isn't that like touching? No, like your body has the ability to, to communicate with you if you listen inwardly. And a lot of, uh, and, and meditation has been taken by every single religion and been repackaged like prayer. When mm -hmm. you go to church, and people sit there praying and they're there and they're, you see them, they get honed in, especially if people like use the rosary, things like that. The rosary and prayer becomes like, what is your mantra? And it helps you go inward to manifest your reality. And the, the fact is, is like religion um, takes, the thing is, I think religion takes away your power because it's making uh, you subservient to something else that you're hoping, you know, like, um, like, god or allah or this person controls my life but in reality you can harness that god energy through meditation and work as that universally for everyone for for your for your internal and external life and it works with psychic ability it works with uh, regeneration in your body with health um there are people that um like i mean i've never met anyone personally but i've i've read many, many accounts of people that use meditation to heal themselves of cancer, to heal themselves of PTSD, you know, to heal themselves of like addictions. And, and I, and I, and it did with me, like, uh, definitely with PTSD and an addiction, you know, um, not that I realized, I didn't realize I had an addiction or it was more like a, it wasn't addiction. It was like a bad habit, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, I, I work in a night, life environment a lot you know i work at a music venue when i'm not you know doing paranormal stuff or research and um i would it was it wasn't a thing for me to take like three to five shots in the course of a night and my metabolism started you know getting all wonky and there'd be times where i'm like doing three to five shots and i'm not even drunk like i just i my my body got so used to taking it you know and I realized it was affecting my health, you know, and, and all this stuff. And when I started meditating, I started rejecting it. My body rejected it. My taste buds rejected it. 
all of a sudden it was like, my body was like, Hey, you need to just stop taking mindless shots at work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now I don't even really drink. Like I drink wine with a fancy dinner now, you know, if I, you know, but I can't even stomach whiskey anymore. And I used to be a proud whiskey girl. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, I know and exactly I, what you mean. <laughs> and I was like, you know, like I had no, I love making old fashions. I love making Sazeracs. I love me some bougie bourbon. You know what I mean? I was mm -hmm. all about that type of life. And, you know, not, I wouldn't drink to get drunk, but now I realize I'm just drinking to drink. It's not even like a social thing. It just became like this weird habit. And since I started meditating, it had literally peeled away at the layers of my bad habits and it's changed my lifestyle forever. And I was having all sorts of issues with like insomnia, um, depression and meditation sucked me out of that. It's not overnight, obviously, but I've been doing it for two years now. And I could literally say I'm a whole different person with a whole new perspective since I've started meditating. And I've discovered new psychic abilities that I would never knew I could harness. So that's why I think when you start meditating, you will start noticing if you had like you, we were talking mildly about like how you have some health issues. Those are things that your body starts kind of like you'll start craving things that heal your body. You know, you'll start, your diet will change and it will be completely on your own. It's like something in your mind clicks. You'll realize through meditation that all this external stuff that's been going on in your world that you've been allowing and absorbing into your life, it goes away. And that's the power of, um, that's the power of meditation is that you go inwards in your own body and you see your true power from the inside and when that power harnesses, it starts working on outwardly outside in your environment. It is like magic. I don't know how to explain it. And I don't know why it took me so long to discover it, especially being a, a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. um, and also I've been having a lot more personal paranormal encounters since I've opened that Pandora's box of meditation. So um it's if you want to experience more phenomena, like definitely meditate and you'll find that you'll go into locations and you'll start feeling them all around you because your energy is wide open and it's a nice, strong, protective energy, you know, that you've worked on yourself. Like mm -hmm. nobody else has a hand on that energy except for you through meditation. And it's amazing. It's an amazing thing that just like transforms a person's life. Oh yeah. Um, I've, I've had that stress to me time and time again you know, do that meditation and the whole chanting and everything. I yes. thought, well, what's that got to do with it? But if you think about it, because deep down our atoms, they move on a frequency. Yes. Vibrational. And it makes up everything in your body. And so that, that chanting causes a vibration and it stimulates them to go the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, just like when you boil water, Mm -hmm. everything all the atoms start moving around so quickly and that's why you get the water boiling mm -hmm. and then you slow it down it turns to ice yep and so you know I, i'm a big believer in that and and also it's I, I don't believe in religion because i believe that every religion that's on this planet is man-made i'll probably get some flack for that but it man has come up with this rule by way he has interpreted the bible Mm -hmm. and says you have to do this you have to do that but yet i can go back and read the bible and says well it says this it did say i have to do this in order to get here so do i have someone that i would call my my god i call odin my god and i i don't follow like this strict code of i've got to be just like this to be in you know in, in this religion Mm -hmm. No, I've learned that spirituality is actually where it's at. People don't understand that. Yeah. You have to have a, a spiritual, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's, it's a relationship Yeah. with what's surrounding you. It's a spiritual relationship. Yeah. So, and I've seen, um, I've seen a religion spawn very positive, like good people I've seen, like, I'm, I guess what I want to say is um, 
I've met some really amazing Christians that live in this very accepting and loving life, like where they are philanthropists, where they will help their neighbor, they'll help their friends, they'll help a stranger in a Christian way, you mm -hmm. know? And I've also seen Christians take that whole format and flip it on its head and reject people, reject their neighbors, reject their stra the strangers, just because they're not part of that group, mm -hmm. you know? So I've seen, and that goes in every sense of the self. I also know like Muslim people that are so <laughs> accepting of me and my beliefs and all this stuff. And it's not like we see on the, like I, I know women that wear and cover themselves out of, not because they feel like they have to, because they respect their bodies and they respect their religion and what they are in their religion. You know, they, they believe that femininity and their womanhood, you know, is uh like a, a superpower you know and that that power gets harnessed for themselves in their own way and they cover that to keep that energy to themselves you know so to keep that to them um and not because a man told them to and not because the quran told them to it's just their belief system and they're wonderful like i one of my doctors she's my gynecologist and you know she she's a muslim woman Mm -hmm. And she's so empowered in her job and she helps other women and she doesn't judge women for being sexually active or having, you know, like other issues which she talked to me about. Cause I've asked her that I was like, like, is it hard for you to see Western women as a Muslim woman all the time? You know, girls having sex before getting married, you know, girls coming in with all sorts of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. She's like, absolutely not. Like I'm here to protect all of the women they're all part of my tribe. Like that's why I chose to be a gynecologist because the women's body is like a, a life bearing temple and we need to protect that. So that was her mind, you know, she's not like this. So, but then you have other people in the same religious sect and they're killing off their own kind in their countries in droves and, and uh, starting patriarchs to submit people under their regimes, you know, like the Taliban and things like that. Exactly. So there's, there's like good and bad in everything. I think at the end of the day, we can't let like old text dictate how we should live. Because in a modern society, as we start to grow and develop and learn about the sciences around us, about what really human, like as we evolve, being human also evolves, like the whole context of being human evolves. We have a mental capacity today that a thousand years ago, human beings also didn't have, you know what I mean? So I don't feel like those old texts need to dictate the future of humankind or mankind, you know? Like we need to be able to revise what was once a good idea to fit where we are now in our evolution right you know well when you think about how religion has uh, it's causing wars and because people are not really studying what the religion really is yeah i, I don't believe that my god's going to come to me and say you know what those people are terrible go kill them no, I believe you believe what you want to believe. I believe what I want to believe. And the only thing I could say would be a sin is to go against what your true beliefs are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not to like impose your beliefs on others. Well, yeah. Uh, I saw and, a meme today. Yeah. This meme said, it's well, it showed like Jesus grabbing hold of this guy holding a bible and he says i sent you here to send a message not to argue yeah so i and who's to say who's right anyway everybody interprets it a different way and that's the way the bible is meant to be it's meant yeah. to be interpreted a different way it keeps these texts keep getting misinterpreted all the time you know what i mean like it's it's a real bummer to see that all of these texts are based off of a central view of like love 
and respect your like it's more like respect yourself respect others respect your body what you know like respect the land it's kind of like these uh it's more like a like i guess the best way to describe it i was watch i was I, I picked up this book we have these little free libraries around and i picked up this book um and it's called a uh, woman like a woman's role in love and marriage but it was written in like the 60s <laughs> <laughs> and I was like really curious. I was like, oh, let me read this. And of course, it's very like, like, what does a woman do with her time? Because in that time, women didn't work. You know, women, it, it was all like how to empower yourself as a woman to be a smart and caring wife at home. And then it keeps, it's like, teaching them how to like sew and how to clean properly and what chemicals not to use because it's bad for your skin or it's bad for this or it's bad for that. And I'm sure that that was a very modern book to be like, Hey, if you don't work, you you can go to school, learn a different language, learn to make cocktails, learn to do something. You know, it was kind of like helping the average housewife in the sixties to develop a sense of self because don't get lost in your husband's identity and all this stuff like that, you know, to be an independent woman, how do you, how are how to be an independent woman in the sixties at home, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it, and it's also written like by another Christian woman, but um, you know, talks a lot about God and things like that too. And it's like that manual today <laughs> as a, like, you know, reading it in 2020, is absurd to me it's like women are way more capable than that and a lot of the times I, to be honest the majority of my female friends make more money than their male counterparts now like it's mm -hmm. it's nuts to see there's a huge difference like this manual doesn't even fit anymore exactly. you know and i feel like it's the same thing with anything else that's been written you know like the the the, the torah the, the bible the quran it it doesn't fit anymore you know Oh, you know, when it comes to, to men and women, okay, I can hear myself talking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes to men and women, we're, and this is my spiritual belief, um, and, it, and, and it does come from the story of how, you know, man and woman was created. And woman was supposed to be there for a helpmate. She wasn't been brought here to be a slave. And part of the spiritual thing is, is you attach to each other spiritually and each one of you does, you deserve to be your own person. And then if you choose that you want to, to join with someone, as long as you don't lose who you are, like I said, you don't want yeah. to lose your identity. And, and there's, there's nothing wrong with a man and a woman in a workplace making the same money. There's no you know, having the same opportunities. I am all for that. But if a woman decides she wants to stay home and that's what she wants to do, well then do it to the best of your ability. Just like if you're in the workforce, do it to the best of your ability. Same time, the man has the same obligation there. You do the best that you can at work and then you come home and you do the best you can. Yeah. You know, I, I guess I told you before the show, I raised my, my two boys basically by myself and it would have been great to have that partner there but i understood the role of if i was a woman and not all i could do was stay home and take care of them mm -hmm. that's that's too hard by yourself yeah it's it, a tough one it, yeah it, and it's and it's tough because even in the workforce today like um i feel like fathers don't get um the connection with their children because they the, all of that responsibility ends up with mothers and then that's why i feel like uh there is a lost dynamic there because i do i feel like there should be an even keel like whereas you know women could go back to work and dads could be stay at home you know there's nothing and, wrong with that either and vice versa and i think we need to live in a society that like raises that you know but right now it's the thing is that you have people that are still alive with this old school mentality, still running governments and games. Mm -hmm. um, as those people start, you know, passing on, then you start getting new people. So it's, I mean, everything's going to change. I definitely believe that like in politics today, I just, I know this, this is supposed to be a ghost podcast and here we are talking about like <laughs> religion and like, you know, 
like the, the matriarch and patriarchal societies and things like that but no i'm um, actually enjoying it yeah it's it's nice like I, I was telling you earlier i was like yeah we could just talk about like texas and barbecues all day and now we're talking about like politics and religion those are like taboo subjects but i guess so are ghosts as well sometimes depending on who you talk to <laughs> yeah i had a bad habit that i've just learned to break that I would get in on these political uh, discussions on Facebook and whatnot. And you know what? Everybody's got their own way of thinking. If you want to be on the left, you be on the left. You want to be on the right, you be on the right. Um, I can tell you what my opinion is. You take it or leave it. You tell me what your opinion is. I take it or leave it. Yeah. There's no reason why we should be at, at war at each other the way it seems to be now. It's, you know, I, I think that's the government's tactics is to pit everybody against each other yeah. so and take, you know, your mind and thoughts away from all the other garbage that's going on. And uh, I mean, excuse me, everybody, I believe, is appointed a leader for a reason. There's some sort of idea or, or whatever that that's been brought to them that is supposed to be in, implemented. I think yeah. all this stuff happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, just like when I got my divorce and, and where I moved and I got to meet my wife that I have now, that plan was set in place. It was my destiny to be there. Yeah. But I also had the choice of free will. If I didn't want to listen to the universe, <laughs> go do my own thing and it was going to fall apart. Yeah. And and now I've moved away from the Houston area and I live up here by Austin and you know, I do miss my, my other kids, but this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So everything happens for a reason. You have a cat too. Yes. Is it a white cat? Yes, it is a white cat. Oh she my has... gosh. Cause I got to get something really quick. He's been meowing cause I put him away. <laughs> Go for it. Yes. She's decided to help interview. Yeah, thank you for coming to see Daddy. This guy. This guy has been meowing nonstop for me to let him out, and it's the equal yet opposite. Oh, uh, <laughs> that I had a black kitty. His name You're was Spaz. Now. I let you out. Stop meowing. <laughs> yeah, if I don't let him in, they just sit there and howl at the door. So I'd rather. That's what he was doing, and I was like, he's not going to stop unless I let him out. And then I saw your little cat head, and I was like, all right, if your cat's out roaming around, I should let my cat roam around. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you that story real quick. But when we met with the uh, the medium, she told us that there's something about a white cat. You're going to end up with a white cat, and sure enough took my, my wife to go get her nails done. Um, I don't know how many months ago it was, but I'm like, I'm going next door to the pet store because I don't want to sit there and watch y'all doing the whole nail yeah. thing, right? <laughs> so I go in there and here's this white cat exactly the way my wife had wanted it. You know, she'd been talking about that forever. It's got one blue eye, one green eye. Oh. And she's oh. as sweet as sweet can be. And so we adopted her. And, um, of course, Michelle, that's, this is her baby. That's her mama. <laughs> and, um, uh, we named her Caridwin. So if you named her Caribou? Caridwin. Caridwin. Yes. What it is, is uh, she's a Celtic goddess. Okay. So I just thought that kind of fit because my wife's, she's a, she's a witch and an empath and that's kind of her thing. So. Wow. Yeah. That sounds a lot like me. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> A uh, empathic witch. I totally I, go down that route. I, I just can't get away from y'all. <laughs> you like I told you earlier. I know other people didn't hear about it, but I think like you choose your life path. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. You come in this world, and with all the things that you have experienced, you know the deaths in your family, um, the heartbreaks that you've sustained. Those are all things that I think you can soul contractually became a part of because you wanted to learn the bigger lessons in this experience in life you know what i mean and that way you graduate sooner or you graduate with flying colors when you decide to leave this planet or leave this three-dimensional world you were born in so i also think that maybe because you chose a higher route even though there was more pain involved in that route mm -hmm. you uh 
meet more spiritually inclined people, you know, and then you start you receiving gifts like clear audience, things like that start coming into you. Those are like, I think universal gifts that were given to you because you have experienced all these things in your life, because you passed all these tests, because you didn't allow these things to break you or make you a negative being because you could have, you could have let all of that, oh. but instead you allowed it to lead you down a more spiritual path, a path in which case you, you know, like now look for energies, you now understand energies, you meet people that work with energies and your life has this whole spiritual theme to it now because this was the path you were supposed to be on, you know, that's what I think, you know, at least with the vibe that I get from you. Oh, well, I believe that our goal in this life is it's more than just having family. It's more than just making money and, and just being here. I think we were meant here to strive for enlightenment. Yes. Which to me was kind of explained as you start at this level and once you get that spiritual awakening or your enlightenment and you realize there's something else in this life that I'm supposed to be doing, or I'm supposed to be believing in, then you, you reach that next height and you yeah. keep going. And then once you've left this, this world, this body, then your spirit goes on to continually be enlightened and continually be able to climb up that, that ladder. I don't know what your feelings are on it, but that's, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree with that. Um, I, I also feel like when you, because you've already been talking about, you're going to get into meditation. It does might not be right now. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be this year, but you're going to see that um, you'll start noticing all those things that have happened to you. They all start kind of, uh, the synchronicities in your life and the paths that you've taken to get where you are today all start making sense. And then it, it, you start using all those tools to open new paths for you. It's like you become your own manifesting alchemist through internal energies that you harness through meditation. It's amazing. And I think like you're on the like cusp of discovering that too. And you know, I'll tell you right now, doctors and uh, all those people, they will want to take your healing powers away from you and prescribe you a pill for something, you know, mm -hmm. and there is a whole other thing behind that. I feel like there are companies I just don't like support anymore, like at all, because I believe that they rather, um, they don't cure anything. All they do is they suppress things. It's a they mask. Suppress, yeah. It's a, it's these suppressive medications that end up ruining other parts of your body, you know, giving you other awful side effects. So they're never, ever really healing you and they're not giving you like, so I'm very big on like alternative medicine. I love things like Ayurveda. I love things like, um, like more holistic type medicines and meditation and, and, uh, this is where I'm, I haven't really gotten big into yoga, but I've been, I had a back injury when I was younger and I know I'm starting to notice through meditation and becoming more aware of my body that that back injury has not healed and it's making it awful for me to sleep at night. I'm tossing and turning. I'm waking, my knees are starting to like, um, bend like and crack because I could feel the alignment of my body is off and I'm like, I need to just do more like physical awareness meditation. That's where yoga comes in. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to preach about yoga because I haven't really been doing it, but it's something that I, I look forward into doing soon because I believe with yoga and meditation, you can like regenerate your body essentially oh, yeah. and diet as well. You know, like be careful with genetically modified foods. Be careful if then I'm not little miss vegan or vegetarian. Like I definitely eat meat but be careful of what sources of meat you're eating, you know, like the animals are being fed genetically modified stuff. You know, like I'm never buying stuff from Kroger, you know, I'm never buying stuff from like foster farms. Like if you've ever seen like what those farms look like, it's awful. Like I, I'm big on like a hunter gatherer mentality where I'm like, and I grew up in Florida. So a lot of my friends hunt, you know what I mean? But it wasn't until I moved to California where I didn't have friends that went hunting and fishing every day. 
you know, mm -hmm. that I realized all of the food that I was eating was coming plastic wrapped in a grocery store. I grew up in Florida and this is probably the same with Texas. This is another thing we were talking about. Like meat in Texas is also different. Um, my friends would go like bow hunting and get and make venison sausages. And this is an animal that lived naturally in the wild that we captured and, and killed and used every part of that animal. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yes. We used the hide. We, we, we tanned the hide. We made jerkies. We ate everything, you know, like on that animal. We made sausages with like tongues and everything, you know, mm -hmm. and it was delicious. And then I used to, be, my thing was fishing and I used to go free dive and I used to capture lobsters, sea urchin, things like that. I'd go fish and throw in lines out just for fun and come back home with like grouper or snapper. And that was how I ate my protein in Florida. And I felt so healthy and so lean and so this, and I came out here and I'm like, why don't I feel like that anymore? And it's because I'm eating all of this farmed shit, you know, farm genetically modified foods. Um, and of course, like also eating too much meat is bad, no matter how wild or natural your meat is. But it, I, I definitely had, I've realized that I started eating a lot less meat since I've been living in California, mostly because I don't have friends that hunt or fish anymore out here. So I, um, I'm not living off the land as much as I used to in Florida. So that was kind of taken away from me. But I know that in a lot of people, and there's a lot of PETA activists out there and things like that, you know, and to be honest, I think the big issue and why we have, play, uh, you know, organizations like PETA um, it's because animal consumptions have become a problem when we have overpopulation of the mankind. You know what I mean? And it's, it's like, oh, kitty tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's but it's fair. Like, I look at nature around me and everything eats everything. You know what that's I mean? True. That's true. And it's, we are part of this planet. We are terrestrial beings. And so I find it to be like unnatural for us to like completely omit certain things. And another thing is like vegans or vegetarians out there, like, do you, I, I love it. Like it, you're being an activist and a voice for animals, which we need because people are just raising animals for consumption in a mindless manner. But then it's like a double-edged sword because it's like, then people won't eat certain things. And then pe people are like, oh, well, if you're vegan, I'll be fine. But then we will also wouldn't have, let's say we would, we replaced all those uh, cow pastures with um, corn or grains or some type of fruit and vegetable. We wouldn't have the capacity to grow that much food if everybody was a vegan. Then we'd have to lean on genetically modified things. Like we, there's no such thing as real soy anymore. Every, all the soy on this planet is essentially genetically modified now. And you think about that and people that eat too much soy products. And that's another thing, vegetarians, be careful with the, you're eating too much soy. <laughs> it's all GMO, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like this dark food thing that I'm dealing with every day that I'm just like, man, can we just teach people how like, if you don't eat meat, if you can't catch it yourself, you right. know what I mean? Like that's what I'm trying to tell people. That's, so, the, that's the big thing. If you don't catch meat yourself, if, if you don't, if you're not hunting out there on your own terms, uh, then you shouldn't be eating it. See, we need to take you to North Texas so you can hook up with Ted Nugent. He'll oh, I know. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things about Ted Nugent that I don't agree with, but I mean, if he's catching his own meat, good for him. I'll have, I'll go to his barbecue. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're also a model. I have done some modeling stuff. Yes. But mostly uh, period pieces, you know, um, I worked on a, the, well, not so much. I worked, the last shoot I did was with a photographer, Dan Santoni, and we did like a character shoot. So I did one um, as a, I guess, a fortune teller. And then I did this kind of like futuristic, um, like Blade Runner style shoot where I wore like all this leather. Um, it was pleather. <laughs> no, no animals were harmed in the making of this outfit <laughs> except for the uh in the back he had this giant like ram skull that that was real um, um and that was his prop but um i'm like did you kill that ram on your own dan santoni otherwise i <laughs> but anyways 
um, you- but yeah, I've done some modeling stuff. I, I think it comes hand in hand. Like initially I, I did stuff in theater. I went to school for acting mm-hmm. and drama and costume design. So I still, I find through modeling, I get to work and with costumes and like character plays and things like that. So every photo shoot that I've done, if it's not like a headshot, it's all character driven. Um, I wear a lot of wigs. So the last one that I did, I, I did a Victorian, well, Haunted by History, which is Craig Owen's book. He's also a photographer and a paranormal investigator and a historian. And he had this book that he came out where he would go to historical locations and bring in models, not just hot girls or whatever, but models that looked of the era and dressed them up in 100% original clothing pieces and everything. And then try to, um, I guess, stimulate the activity in the rooms through characters that he would bring into the environment to make it seem of the era when it was like in its thriving state. So I did one at the Victorian Rose in in Ventura. And um, it used to have like a room where um, it used to be an an old cathedral, you know, so it was like a church, so to speak. And they turned it into an Airbnb. It's absolutely beautiful. So, and we went back to like the 1800s when it was built and I wore original like 1800s negligee and took photos in that. So everything I've done modeling wise has all been character driven because um yeah i don't know it's a lot of fun to do that and i like working with um other photographers and like brainstorming on like scenarios and ideas you ever thought about doing body painting i i i mean no it's not my no. thing i was gonna say i have a friend of mine that does <laughs> that so if you need the hookup I'll do face painting. <laughs> like I've, I've thought, um, I've thought a lot about doing like um, more like practical effects stuff. Um, I have a friend who he does all the werewolf makeup on Teen Wolf for MTV and stuff like that. I mean, he works in feature films and stuff like that. And he's like, "Let me turn you into a creature." So I'm down to do that. Like wear like the appliques and the suits and turn me into like a you know werewolf or some really cool like practical effects like monster like i love that idea but the body paint is more like more of like a like a gawking type thing it's like let me see through that body paint you know (laughs) yeah i'm I'm a little bit more conservative than that you know hey there's nothing wrong with that but uh, he used to be on that show on the on sci-fi skin wars Wars, that's it he was on skin wars that was pretty awesome it's kind of cool. cool. I, I mean, I'm so we have Fantasy Fest in, in Key West in Florida every October. Mm-hmm. And that's the big thing. Like everybody goes out there and does the body paint and just literally walks around naked. And I tell you some of the most beautiful bodies and some of the roundest bodies have some of the most amazing body paint, you know, and I, I love that. But it's like, I'm too shy for that. I, I think I'm, I'm like a little nervous. Not I'm not uh, self-conscious of my body at all, but I'm just definitely too shy, you know? <laughs> and I've also been bullied online for stuff. Like I've done like some like topless type photographs and things like that. And um, it's all very artistic and stuff, but then people will like slut shame you to death about it. You know, I'd be like, oh my God, like here she is. Like I even did a movie um, that came out and I have like a, very slight topless scene and it's in a very non-sexual way um and people just went ape shit over that and it was just like uh, it's like you haven't seen boobs before this is the internet age you know what i mean <laughs> like, yeah God damn. but um yeah no i still like i think because of all the neck i don't want any like negative attention or like creepers anymore like i'm so over it um it's they're like energy vampires like the people that troll you on the internet and they're all like ugh, like they'll literally just take pictures and cut out every part of my that picture to just show the one three quarter of a boob that i sh- showed <laughs> you know what i mean it's just like ugh, come on now folks it's like i can't i also want people to like consider me to be like a legitimate paranormal researcher and sometimes people get blindsided by the fact that I do like modeling and acting and they think you can't be both, you know? 
but my argument with that is um, anybody that practices it, like that is a paranormal investigator, that is a ghost hunter that goes out, they all have day jobs, oh, every yeah. single one of them. So because you're an insurance person or because you work at Walmart makes you less of a spiritual person or investigator, like that's because I'm an actor makes me less of a genuine person. Like that's not cool, you know? So I liked to like break that stigma a little bit. So it's like weird having to walk this fine line as a person that models and acts that lives in Los Angeles that continues to do projects and film, you know, and people like don't want to take me seriously because I don't know, because I, I do this type of work that I can't be a spiritual and professional investigator, you know? It's like, like they, they want you to be this one person and you can't yeah. expand. And that's, that's not how people should be. You should be, yeah. you know, one day I'm here on the computer and I'm doing everything for the network. Yeah. You know, uh, my day off, I might be hanging out at the comic book store or, you know, yeah. going to a hockey game. So I, I love the paranormal, but I'm not going to just spend 24 hours a day doing nothing but that. That's not yeah. right. You're Everybody's multifaceted out. and everyone has different interests. Like just looking at you, like you, you have paranormal people behind you, but then you also have actors. Like you love cinema. Obviously I love mm. cinema too. Does that make us less credible as paranormal investigators? Absolutely not. You know what I mean? So it's just things like that, that it's like, you have to kind of tug at the consciousness of people and be like, how is it that you can be a legitimate paranormal investigator um, and have also your own private life? Like being a paranormal investigator does not make a lot of money unless you have a television series or you are an author in it. Mm -hmm. And even then, like the series when that series is done or you're in between seasons i remember this on ghost hunters international you're not getting a paycheck for like four to six months yeah. so what do you do in that time in between you so most people what they do is they go to conventions and then they charge like high appearance fees or they sell like in between things like actually when you go and you're buying uh like an eight by ten like the ones that you have behind you you are sustaining an artist on their down period you know what i mean because nice. they're like they get paid for that one movie but you know they have bills just like everybody else does they have a mortgage they have rent they have insurances they need to pay and that goes away really quick especially if you're not working within six months to a year for your next project so essentially going to cons is the only way you could support artists on their downtime you know mm. and even then when they're going to conventions you're paying like 30 bucks for like a photo and a signature or whatever that's only enough probably to sustain them for a month or two but then they have to continue doing either more conventions or if you're burnt out on that what do you do you have your own jobs like i work with music i work at a music venue you know that's what i do or i work in feature films you know and the, again the feature films come in between like so you know yeah like so it's just things like that like people don't really put things into perspective on other people's lives and like what it is to be a human being sustaining yourself financially you know being a ghost hunter or a paranormal investigator is not the most lucrative job <laughs> you know yeah. but well, um people see you on television they automatically think oh these people are making all kinds of money you know you're rich believe me it's not going to make you rich i Unless, had an apartment that i split rent with a roommate so like that's where if i was like you know she she you know and i have very different lifestyles and you know yeah i live in la but even people like i, I and i see this every day working at a music venue like like people that you know in bands like people that you see on mtv you know mm -hmm. are still driving around and like a 2005 Yaris <laughs> you know what I mean yes. like it's not like just because they have music videos and they're in a band they're making buku amounts of money it's just doesn't work like that especially that's what happens when you work in media today especially with the age of the internet everything's accessible for free you know like we need to get away from that whole like you know Led Zeppelin made it seem like back in the day like they had their own jets and they had this and they had that but it's like if Led Zeppelin came around today they would be living in normal ass houses <laughs> probably close to their industry which is like LA or New York 
you know, and um, like cursing Apple Music for not giving them their their cuts, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's it's a tough world out there, especially with media now. Like, so um, that being said, like I investigate for free, and I put a lot of my own money up to we investigate. You know mm. what I mean? And that's not a cheap hobby. You know what I mean? So like, um, I am going to be going to Japan. And one of the biggest reasons I'm going to Japan in April is because I want to go to the Aoki Ahara forest, which is like the, the big known suicide forest in Japan. And that is like a kind of, you know, that costs a lot of money. <laughs> I had to pay for that out of pocket. Nobody's financing that trip for me, you know, but this is my passion and this is what I love to do, you know, and, and then, you know, I have to work multiple jobs to be able to follow my spiritual path. And every now and then I get lucky enough for a television series or someone, you know, like saying, Hey, we want your expertise on our show or, Hey, we want you to investigate with this team. I don't get paid until I get those appearances, you know, and, and that's just how that cookie crumbles in the paranormal field if you're doing it on media. So, but yeah, I definitely spend a lot of my own money doing this stuff. And I just shot, uh, I just did an investigation with some witches and I had to bring a whole slew of equipment that I can't afford. So I had to rent it. I rented it on my own dime, you know, and I still do this and I pay to do it because I'm passionate about it, you know? So yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, I'm just like all of you guys that are in the field, you know, you just, you have to, you find your hobby and you spend a lot of money on it. Right now I'm spending a lot of money on my car. <laughs> so <laughs> there goes a lot of hobby plans for me. Like, I'm like, damn, like I'm not going to be able to get that camera before I go to Japan. You know, the one that I really wanted to use, but I still get to go and hike the Aoki Gohara forest. And I think that's enough for me. Unless anybody wants to sponsor me some cameras, that would be great. I heard that. Did, do you have a Patreon? I don't. See, I'm not, very, I'm not very savvy with that stuff. I didn't even know how to use this Zoom. I was like, let's get on early. I don't even know how this thing works. You know, um, I don't want people to see me stumbling around on Zoom. I'm trying to look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I used Skype for the longest time, but I kept having problem after problem. Either I'd freeze and you couldn't hear me or vice versa. And mm -hmm. um, my wife, where she works at, they use Zoom. And they're always having big fancy meetings. And, and so that's, uh, I've got another helper here too, by the way. That's kind of where I learned about Zoom and, and it works really well. So yeah. use it. No, this has been super clear. Oh, you have a cute little tortoise shell kitty. Yes, this is my tortie. Her name is Magenta. We call her Maggie. Oh, Mag. She, she is my, uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it? She's like a service animal to me. My, when I have my anxiety attacks or something, she knows when I'm having them. She'll jump in my lap and, Oh, now she's just like, okay, daddy, you're not giving me any attention. It's my turn. Yeah. She's <laughs> cute. Oh goodness. Look at that face. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. She's my little buddy. Well, but, I mean, I just wanted to say thank you for having me. Oh yeah. Um, thank you. Because of my whole hiccup with my car. Now I have to go and share cars and give cars back because I took my boyfriend's car and now he needs it for work. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's understandable. Mercury retrograde for those that believe in that, like we're going to be dealing with mercury retrograde things like with mechanics and communications. Like as soon as it started, my car went to shit and I'm just hoping that this will be the last major. See, I, I drive a 2005 Murano. It's got 120,000 miles on it. I do not have a fancy sports car or an Escalade or a Tesla. <laughs> I have right. something that I could take off-roading and not feel bad if it gets a ding or two. Hey, I drive around in a used Toyota truck, so, you know. But there I love it. It, it. Yeah. The, the universe blessed me with it. I'm happy with it. That's how I felt. I actually had a nice little sports car that I bought because it was my dream car, the RX-8, and then it got stolen. And so my mom gave me her 2005 Murano, as long as I shipped it from Florida over to LA, which is what I did. 
Um, so I got that car essentially for shipping costs from Miami to LA. Um, but now I'm just, I, and I was so used to driving this tiny little two seater, like sports car. And that wasn't new. I bought it used too, you know, um, they don't even make an RX-8 anymore because the rotary engines just kind of, I mean, I love rotary engines. There's something beautiful about them, but they're just not in style anymore. But, um, yeah, that car got stolen because it's a gem. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, they found the car, but it was completely gutted. They took out the engine, they took off my rims, and then the insurance called it like a total loss. And I just kept the insurance money and went on a trip to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got rear-ended one time. And when I finally got my settlement, I paid uh, $900 a ticket to go see Kiss and get to meet him backstage. So, Damn. You see? Know. I say I can live with the dent. Things bring good things. <laughs> yeah, I will live with the dent. I can't live without meeting Gene Simmons at least once in my life. You know. There you go. <laughs> there you go. No, that's actually great. I love that story. <laughs> so, real quick, um, paranormal on camera. That is that your yeah. main thing you're doing right now on television. So on TV, I have paranormal caught on camera on the Travel sh Channel, which is every Wednesday. Um, I also have my own independent uh, content that I do called, the, if you go to thedarkzone.tv, um, me and some other paranormal colleagues uh, work through that website and we make our own content completely. This is another way I spend a lot of my money <laughs> is by going to investigating locations um, and then showing people my private investigations that I do outside of television and it's called hipster haunts so you can cap catch hipster haunts on youtube or you can go to the darkzone.tv and check it out as um and then yeah that's what i do i do the dark zone hipster haunts and paranormal caught on camera right now um so if i'm not doing anything on tv i'm still doing hipster haunts um and it's free content you know I that i produce individually I will share the uh, the dark zone Facebook page on on our pages. Yeah, I actually shared this whole um, podcast and everything with the dark zone. We have a lot of followers, like twenty thousand people. Ah. So hopefully, if you're following this from the dark zone, hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I I got on my social media, and all of a sudden, just friend, 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 friend. You have a mutual friend. And it says, like on my Instagram, it says, uh, Susan the Dragon. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I love that. It's good. We have to, like, create that web of paranormal people, you know. I love that so much. The only people I add on any of my accounts are people. I check everyone's profile before I add them because there's creeps out there. Mm -hmm. So if you've been added, it's because I've looked at your profile extensively. So that's why it's, it takes me forever to add people online. Um, cause I'm always going through their profiles and I'm adding you if you're paranormal and we share a lot of interest or deleting you if you look like a creep. Oh. And, <laughs> and you still, up. you still accepted my friendship. Yeah. <laughs> and I, look I mean, like with a name like Coyote, <laughs> for sure, definitely 110%. Yeah, that, but, that, um, that stuck with me all my life. From the day I was born, my, uh, my aunt actually gave me that name. So, so I love that. That's a cool name. I have a ton of coyotes in my neighborhood and I love them. Oh. Yeah, I live on the edge of Griffith Park in Los Angeles and there's tribes of coyotes. You see them all night long. You hear them. My favorite thing in the, at night is like um, breeding season, which is like somewhere around the springtime. You mm. hear the coyotes calling from each other in the hills and I open all my windows and I just listen to the coyotes howling. And sometimes if I'm really lucky, you'll hear the coyotes howling and the ones that already have like a den with like pups you hear the little baby coyotes mop, like mimicking mom and you just, it's the sweetest thing. Like I love the coyotes in my neighborhood Aww. and I definitely go out and like leave little treats for the coyotes when I go hiking. Um, yeah, I'm a coyote lover. I love canines in general. So 
Oh. I have I have cats that I live <laughs> with, but I am definitely a dog person. I just can't have a dog in an apartment. So, mm. and because I travel so much, they're so you know they they need more attention. You need to take them for walks, and I would hate to have an animal that I can't like really give all my love and attention to. Where cats are super chill. Oh, yeah. um, I have a pet snake too. Actually, the, the cats are really my roommates, but they've become mine because I've been here for four years. The snake is my official child that I have. Oh, what do you have? She's a rainbow boa. She's oh, about okay. like five feet now. Oh, wow. Well. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, she's sweet. She's easy. I don't have to feed her for a week. You know, and so if I go out of town, if I go out of the country, like I know that I have like two weeks before I can actually have to come back to feed my snake. So she's fine. Yeah, my my kids have this little uh, chihuahua dog and I call it the rat. So I'll just send it to you and you can feed it to the snake. I love chihuahuas <laughs> too. Uh, <laughs> just always in that little nippy chihuahua. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but um i think it's that time where i have to start getting ready to get my boyfriend to work <laughs> no problem i've He's kept you on here long like, enough yeah but thanks so much for having me i honestly thank you for being here and anyone who's listening thank you so much for like being part of this conversation um i i do love to hear people's opinions on the subjects we talk about so well, hopefully was... they'll leave a comments as long as there's no problem with the editing this evening, it should be out tomorrow and I will send you the link. All right, do that. That would be amazing. Well, thanks guys for coming back and, and joining us on Into the Pit and stay tuned. I've got some more really exciting guests coming up and I cannot wait and look for our posts. We will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast.